Hey, what's going on guys? I have a CZ 457 22 long rifle here. Um, I'm going to pull the barrel off of this and calculate the head space. And then I'm going to install the correct size um, bolt shim from triggershims.com. So I figured I'd bring you along for the ride and hopefully teach you something as I learn it for myself. So the first thing you're going to want to do is um, take the barrel off. There's two set screws that hold it in. This is just a smooth uh, shank. It's it's not like a threaded barrel tenon or anything. So you're going to want to take these set screws out. I'm just going to take them out completely. I don't know if you have to or not, but we're going to take them out, set them aside until we're done here. Now, I'm going to take my handy dandy Brownells uh, brass and nylon hammer and tap lightly on this action to see if it comes off. It's starting to move. And if you see here, um, that's where the set screws um, tighten down into. So, with that off now, we can measure, let me zoom in here a little bit. We can measure the length of this tenon and we're gonna write it down and we'll use it to calculate headspace here. So I'm gonna, normally for something like this, I would use a depth mic, but the most uh, people watching this probably only have a set of calipers, so we're going to do it with calipers, so um, it's more relevant to you guys. So I'm getting around 1.19 Let's do it a couple times just to make sure. I apologize for that, guys. My daughter came down and she likes playing on dad's bench, so had to take a quick intermission there, but we're back. Um, as you can see, I repositioned the barrel. It's easier to get measurements, I have found up and down like this, so I just hold this flush, and then I'm getting right around 1.190. I'm gonna take a measurement from this side too. Just a hair over 1.190. Um, it's not even to the 1.191. So I'm going to write down the 1.190. I'm going to take the barrel out of here and I'm going to set the action up the same way that I set the barrel up just to get a good, easy measurement. I love this real avid, avid vice. Uh, if you watch my videos, you hear me talking about it quite often, but I picked this up from Brownells and it just is great to use as an extra hand for all kinds of things. Um, I suggest picking one up. I'll throw a link in the description. Um, but as you can see here, what you want to do, let me close this, the bolt is closed. You want to measure down from the action face down to the bolt face where the shell sits. So like that deepest recess is where you're going to be measuring to. But the problem here with just using a set of calipers is where you need to measure is in the center. 
so you don't have a good spot the calipers actually fit down in where if you're using a depth mic it would uh span this distance and you wouldn't have much problem measuring it at all so what i suggest doing is uh any kind of flat piece of metal or something preferably something that's not going to flex when you're measuring off the center of it um i got this uh 60 degree uh fishtail for setting up um for threading on the lathe and i'm going to measure it real quick and it's measuring in right around 42 thousandths so what i'll do there is um i'm going to use it to measure across and then i'll just subtract uh 42 thousandths from my measurement i'm going to write it down here so i don't forget So, I'm getting right around 1.275. Let's measure again. Yeah, right around 1.275. So that's going to go over here to do the math. So I said the 1.275. Don't forget to subtract your 42 thousandths. So you're ending up with... Um, 1.233, that's your uh, action face to bolt face. And this up here is your barrel tenon length. So the next thing you wanna do is, um, preferably if you have like one ammo that you wanna shoot or so you already have it dialed into one ammo that already shoots good, but you want to see if it shoots better. What you need to do next is measure the uh, the rim. And it's right around um, 40 thousandths. That's actually 39 thousandths. Um, but it all varies. Probably not going to shoot this rifle uh, match by SK out of it, but I'll just show you how it varies. This one, I believe, yeah, see, it's, it's measuring more in like 42 thousandths. Actually, a little bit more. 43 thousandths or so. Um, but I don't plan on shooting that in this rifle, so I'm going to stick with the Ely, both the club and the target, um, relatively cheap to shoot, but pretty consistent. Um, and the rims were both coming in around the, uh, 40 thousandths mark. So you're going to take the 40 thousandths rim and you're going to add that to your, uh, your barrel tenon length because the rim the 40 thousandths of the rim is actually what's sticking out of the barrel to give you that overall length. So that's coming in at 1.230 and the bolt face is at 1.233. So that gives you a headspace of three thousandths. So you got your, um, shim kit here from trigger shims and according to this the blue shim is three thousands so that's what we're going to put in here so the next step would be to show you guys how to disassemble the bolt 
and then install the shim. Uh, disassembling the bolts pretty easy. You only need a couple tools. Um, I got these uh, push punches from Brownells, as well as these precision screwdrivers. Uh, Forster makes them, but I picked those up from Brownells too. Everything I use today, um, I'm gonna throw in the description. If there's anything that you see that you might like to have, pick one up, including the hammer I used to tap the action off. But anyways, let's get back to this bolt. The first thing you need to do is um, decock it. So you just rotate the bolt handle until it's into the lower notch there. That's technically where it would be after you fire it, but when you lift the bolt, it recocks it. So you're gonna do that. You push down, there's a little, you can feel a little bit of spring tension on this bolt shroud. And when you push down on it, you're gonna be able to push this pin right out like so. Got a little bit of recess in the center, but uh, not very hard to, you don't gotta hammer it out or anything. You should be able to push it out with a, a punch or anything similar. So, and then, but I like these push punches because like I said, it almost acted like a, uh, a slave pin. The stuff didn't go flying apart when you push the pin out. So now I'm ready to take it out. And then you'll see there's a firing pin spring, and then there's also um, this little spring with this red. It's just like a cocked indicator. It sticks out the back of the bolt here when the when the bolt's cocked. We're just gonna leave this stuff together and put it off to the side for now. And then the next thing you're gonna have to do is um, remove this uh, collar it's what acts as a spring for these um, extractors. So just a straight, straight screwdriver or anything just to get underneath here and pry this up. There we go. And then once that comes off, for this, you don't have to take the extractors out, but if they come out, they are different. Um, if you're holding it how it would go into the rifle, the one on the right side, they don't come out very easy, so hopefully you don't have to mess with them. But I'm gonna pull them out just to show you guys real quick here the one on the right is a uh, sharper has more of a point and then the one on the left come on come out of there and then the one on the left is more rounded that's because um as you're extracting the round, the rim needs to uh, roll off of this one. So when it hits the ejector, it, it flies out. So just remember the sharp pointed ones on the right, the more rounded one is on the left. I'll just leave them out till we're done here. And then once that's off, you can pull everything apart. The um, firing pin will come out of there too. You don't really need to take it out for what we're doing. We're just gonna open up the shim kit. I'll dump them all out so you can see them. Looks like they're just uh, marked with Sharpie and actually the one I need is laying right on top, but you see you have your different colors and we need the um, blue one. I just wanted to double check for the three thousandths. Uh, you can either throw this over this or you can throw it over the firing pin. I kind of like it there because it stays on better. What do we got going on here? There we go. Yeah, maybe it's better on the 
Maybe it's better on the um, firing pin side. That way you can get the firing pin started into, into uh, the bolt body without an issue. I don't know why I'm having issues, guys. Oh, because it's upside down. That's why. So that's back in. As you can see, the bolt shim's right there. And then you're going to want to put your extractors back on. Remember the more rounded one is on the left. And then the more pointy one is on the right. And then you gotta put this collar back on. Flip the bolt over. I kinda clip it down over one of the um, extractors. And then you want to get underneath. You need to get underneath it. Can be a little tricky. Oh, so close, so close. Perfect. So when it's back on, that spring clips over the extractor, and then it, or extractors, I mean, and it acts as its spring. So that's back in good. Verify bushing or the shim's still in there. And then again, you got your um, firing pin spring and then the spring and the little indicator. The smaller side of the indicator goes into the bolt shroud so it can pop out that hole. And then with this in the same position that you had it when you disassembled it, you push the bolt shroud back on. Maybe. I'm gonna use my um, push punch just to line it up until I get this pin started. Back it off a little bit so we get the pin started. Remember, push down on the bolt shroud, it takes the rest of the spring tension off, and then it fits right back in. Um, It'll stay recessed on both sides if you get it lined up good. Just like that, guys. I'm going to put this back in the... I got it. I'm going to put it back in the action just to verify everything's good here. Oh, sorry. That's my fault. You need to recock it before it'll go back in. There we go. That thing was fighting me, but yeah, just when it's in the fired position like that, just push on the bolt handle and it'll go back into, up into place. It needs to be cocked to go back in the action. And then, then we're good. We're ready to uh, put the barrel back on.
jump back over here to the barrel. Just gonna tap on the back of the action with my nylon hammer just to get it up into place like so. And then if you remember from the beginning, the two little set screws. They go in at an angle, so just be careful. Don't cross thread them going in. If they're not going, back, back them out and see what's going on. Don't force them. All right, and uh, CZ recommends 44 inch pounds for these screws. So I have my um, fat wrench here. Wheeler actually sent me this one for free, but um, Brownells has them. I'll throw a link for this as well in the description. So I'm going to bump it up just a hair over. 40 here. That's all it takes, guys. I'm curious how um how it affects accuracy. I'll um update you guys after I try it out, but um, again, these trigger shims are from triggershims.com. Um, they make them for more than just this rifle. So if you're watching this and you have another rifle, there's a good chance they may make a shim for it, provided your bolt um, is two piece like that, then you're able to fit a shim in there somewhere. Uh, they can't do that from the factory because they kind of have to accommodate different ammo and they need to make sure the gun functions for everything. But if you have your gun dialed in and you found the ammo that shoots best, this can potentially only make it shoot better. So you're better off to do your trials and errors and um, figure out what ammo works best for you. Then you measure the rim of that specific ammo, take your calculations from the headspace, and then you use the shim that... Uh, gives you the perfect zero headspace as i like to call it so i hope this helps some people um if you have any questions comments leave them below thanks guys